Have you ever wondered how to set up a music system in your room? If you have, this is the tutorial for you. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a CV2 music system in your room so that you can play through a playlist of audios. I'll also show you how to set up a button or interaction volume to skip to the next song in the playlist. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into my backpack tab and click use on my maker pen. I'm going to go into my palettes and search up the audio player. I'm going to spawn that into the middle right here. I'm then going to go to tools, configure, and I'm going to configure the component, scroll down to the player settings, and we're going to click on voice and change it to music. This way when players turn down their audio slider for music and settings, it will turn down our music as well. All right, now we're going to want a list create. So I'm going to put this right here, and this is what's going to hold a list of all our audios. So if you configure this list create, you can add or remove pins. You want to add as many pins as you want audios. I want three different songs, so I'm going to add one extra pin since it comes with two by default. We're then going to grab either sample audios or music constants. Sample audios are for recording your own music into the game through your microphone, while music constants are music tracks that Rec Room has already imported for you. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the music constant. I'm going to spawn in three since we have three pins and configure those to different songs so that we can hear the difference in the music when we're testing it. All right, now that I've got those configured, I'm going to wire each one to a pin. Now that we have that set up, we're going to need an integer variable. They're called int variable in the palette. We're going to spawn that in to the right, and then we're going to configure that variable and give it its own name. I'm going to call mine music state. You're then going to want to make sure the synced option is turned on in the config menu. We're then going to wire the finished pin of the audio player to the input of that variable. Next, we're going to need an add chip. We're going to put that add chip under the music state. We're going to wire the output of the variable to the top pin of the add and the output pin of the add into the input pin of the variable. We're then going to set the bottom number of the add to one. Now, every time a song is finished, it is going to add one number to this variable. This is then going to get a spot in the list so that whenever we're finished with audio, it adds one to the variable and gets the next song in the list. So to get that song in the list, we're going to need a list get element. I'm going to put mine down here. We're then going to wire our list create into our list get element. But if we just wire this int variable straight into our list get element, we're going to run into a problem because eventually it's going to add more numbers to this variable than we have songs in the list create. So for instance, if this variable gets up to the number three and we only have two elements in this list create, since it starts at zero, it will error out because it will be trying to get the third element in a list with only two elements. So to solve this problem, we're going to go into our palette and we're going to be using a chip called modulo. Now that we have our modulo chip, I'm going to put it right here. We're going to wire our variable into our modulo pin in the top. And then for the bottom pin, we're going to need a chip called list get count. So let's get count can go right here. 
and we'll wire our audio list into the list get count, the output into the bottom pin of the modulo. Then the output of the modulo into our list get element. We're then going to wire the output of the list get element into our audio pin for the audio player. Next thing we're going to need to do is get a event receiver. So we're going to type in event receiver in our search bar and spawn it in about right there. We're then going to configure our event receiver and under events, we're going to want the event room loaded. There it is right there. We're then going to go to, back to our connect and connect our event to the play. I'm going to move it a little bit so it's more organized. And the last thing we need to do is wire the output of our variable back to our play. So now we've got a loop that will run forever going through each song when a song is finished. But you'll notice we can't hear any music right now. That is because our room is already loaded since we made it in this instance of the room. So if we want to start our loop to test it, we can just use a button. Spawn in a button and wire the press tab to the play pin. This is going to start our loop. So as you could hear, it does work and it is playing the first audio because we had just started the loop. So I'm going to keep this button and I'm going to rewire it and do something else with it. I am going to make it a skip button. So if we take our button and wire the pressed to stop and the stop to the input of this variable, we already have a skip button. So whenever this button is pressed, it will skip to the next audio in the track. If it's the last audio in the track, it will loop back to the first audio in the track. I'll go ahead and show you guys that now. All right, well that is how you set up a fully working CV2 music system inside of one of your rooms. I hope this also helped you learn a little bit more about circuitry, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.